Hi, my name is Benson. I'm a trainer in Edelman Wellness here in Amara Century Resort. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about golfers and how we allow golfers to mobilize themselves and produce maximum force. So from here, we separate ourselves by doing a lot of trigger pointing. What trigger pointing works, right, is actually self myofascial fascia release technique that release the muscle, muscle fibers from the muscle knots through the muscle adhesion that you get from repetitive movement you get throughout the golf swing and number of years playing golf. So what we do, muscle knots is just like muscle fibers that just at one row, right? So the more muscle knots you have, you can't stretch the rope bit just a rubber band, you can't produce maximum force. So what we do right here is to make sure that these, these knots are released for the muscles to actually lengthen itself so that we can mobilize the muscle body and produce maximum force. So from here, after that, we will stretch our clients. Then we will do a lot of balancing work, strengthening work. Uh, we understand the human anatomy well for them to allow them to produce maximum force at um, the shortest time. So this, because golf, right, is one-sided sport. Is the, the force is produced in, the, in an instant. So an uh, angulation that is wrong or muscle fiber that is tight or a joint that is tied up, right, is not going to work. So what we do right here is just to make sure that this instance of a golf swing works for the golfer and um, make sure that our game gets better. Hi Ben, today I'm going to release um, the rotators of the shoulder girdles muscles. First, I'm going to start with the internal rotators of the muscles that bring your humerus bone into horizontal abduction. Okay. So, the, the muscles right here is the chest, the pec major and pec minus muscles as well as the legs region. Then after that, once I release the internal rotators, what is most important is also the external rotators as well. Okay. So I'm going to go into targeting the infraspinatus muscles. So from here, we just lie down, facing up. Good. So first, let's start with the chest muscles. Let's spread the hands towards the side. There you go. So I'm just going to place the ball at the pet minus region. Every time I do it, I want to take a deep breath and release. Okay. So, ready? Deep breath, release. Good. What I'm actually doing now is actually release the muscle knots in the pet minus region. Deep breath, release. Way to go. Deep breath, release. I'm going to bring it to the axillary line. It's going to be slightly painful. Stay with me. Good. And deep breath, and release. Way to go. Good. So I'm going to repeat this for three more counts. Now I'm done, I'm going to go through the legs region. So from here, I'm going to place both hands up above the head. So with the right arm holding the left wrist and pull it up straight. So from here, I'm going to go through the legs region. So same thing, deep breath release. Good. I'm just going to look for a tender spot. Once I found it, I'm just going to hold it there. Yeah, deep breath. Right. There you go. Deep breath. Release. Good. Relax. Deep breath. Good. There you go. Deep breath. Release. Good. So from here, I'm going to go through three more passes to make it four. So once I'm done, I want you to turn around. Yep. I'm done as an internal rotators. Let's work on the external rotators. Good. Just bring the elbows to the side of the body. There you go. From here, I'm just going to work on the infraspinatus muscles that's located right inside the scan or what we call lamentum, the shoulder blade muscles. Right? So the shoulder blade inside this the infraspinatus muscles. I'll just go to a tender spot. I'm going to take a deep breath through this. Good. There you go. Bend through this. Good. Good. The, the pain does radiate down to the shoulders because uh, the, the um, inverse parietus muscle, right, it attaches to the humerus bone. So it's normal, right? So take a deep breath with this. Good job. There you go. Deep breath. Good, one more count. Deep breath. Release. Okay, I'm going to go through three more passes to make it four. Once I'm done, I just need to stand on up and free up the shoulders to feel the mobility and flexibility you have. Yeah, welcome. There you go. Good job.
Now, after we're done with the mobilizing and stretching, yeah. now we need to do some strengthening work with some balancing work as well. So, I'm going to introduce you the Viper. The Viper, in short, is vitality, performance, and weight conditioning. This is different from dumbbells and barbells because you don't go sagittal plane, you go a lot of 3D transverse plane motion, okay. right? That's relevant for a golf and a student Definitely. as well, right? So, what I want to do is just to hold on to the handles in the offset position, right this way, and the other one, right this way. So, yep. what you gonna do? I'm just gonna use the power plate and the bosu ball to create instability in the feet for you to ma uh, produce maximum force. Great. Right. So step on out the right leg, step on the power plate, the left in the middle of the bosu. Right. We're just gonna feel slight instability. Yep. So the what does power plate does right is it will start vibrating. It will give a lot of movement through muscle contraction, a lot of muscle stimulation as well. But most importantly, it will give you a lot of neuromuscular conditioning. Great. Right? So from here, what I'm going to do is just to go through the, the go through the entire golf swing. So soften the elbows, bring it as far as you can, rotate it through the T-spine, not so much, not so much on the hips. So rotate through the T-spine. Once you go down to the follow through, right, rotate through the hips. Because now the left feet is on the bosu ball. If you rotate too much, you will fall off. For sure. Now follow through, you can rotate because this is on the power plate, it's more stable. Right? So I'm just gonna the power plate uh, at 30 hertz. 30 to 60 seconds. From here, yep. get a spine angle and go for the back trip. As far as you can. Maximum force production and go. There you go. Beautiful. Make sure you stay at the spine angle. Good. And get maximum thoracic mobility. So make sure that the banks face the target. There you go. Beautifully done. Go through a couple more. Good. Exhale on the way out. Back, stabilize yourself, inhale, and exhale. There you go, beautiful. Good. So we're gonna do one more count as fast as you can. Go. There you go. Good job. My friend, now we're done with power movement. I'm gonna work on more stability movement. Great. But inside we work with a lot of spinal rotation. Now I want to lock the hips down. Once I lock the hips down, there's no internal rotators. Now we're just gonna work on thoracic spine. So from here, I'm just going to use, give you the sand belt. Yep. It's sand right inside. So what I want you to do is to place your knee uh, on the middle of the bosu ball, with your knees as close to you as possible. Okay. There you go. So the purpose of this is to make sure that you are, you are balancing on the bosu ball. Yeah? So yep. the feet shouldn't be touching the ground at all. Okay. Right? Yep. So from here, what I want to do is just try to create some rotation and strength. Uh, extend the elbows to the side. So the, the sand belt is always right in front of the chest. So the only the only force production right is through rotation of the trunk. Through here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from here, rotate through the trunk, release. So you don't do just shoulder building muscles, you rotate from here, release maximum maximum power as much as you can, throw it to me, but make sure the feet stays off the ground. Ready? And good, stabilize yourself. Good. Ah, uh, can do better than this. Harder. There you go. Stabilize. Good. So from here, let, let me take this up for progression. Okay. Keep your feet off the ground. I'm going to throw it at the angle that it's supposed to toss. So we need to pick up the setup and decelerate. I'm no longer going to throw it in front of the chest. I'm going to throw it to the side. Once you catch, decelerate down. Accelerate up as fast as you can. Ready? Go. There you go. It will be more instable this way. There you go. Good. Make sure it stays right in front of the chest. Rotate through the trunk and release the sand down right through the fingers. There you go. Nicely done. Two more counts. One more. Whoa. And excellent. Good job. There you go. Good. Right. Um, here in Elrond, we put all our golfers in um, instable platform. It's just because we want to train not only their musculature, we want to train their neuro as well. Neuro is the brain. So we want to produce the maximum force at the shortest amount of shortest amount of time. We need to train the brain to recruit the right number of muscle fibers, uh, what I call rate coding or firing rate of muscle fibers to produce the force in an instant. So all the strengthening work as a progression for good golfers, we will put them on unstable platform for them to go through the whole movements. Okay, I'm going to teach you an activation technique to make sure that you are mobilized before the golf game. 
So this activation technique is going to bring you to joist motion and musculature to its full range of motion for you to produce better golf. Okay. Okay. So from here, what you're going to do, I want you to hold on towards the end, slightly wider than shoulder width apart. Okay. Yep. Hold on to it. Good. So we take, we just going to take a strike forward. Yeah. Take a strike forward. Good. And get your toes at the back. From here, you drop the knees down at the back. Good. So you're going to keep the golf club right in front of your chest all the time. You're not going to move the shoulder girding muscles. From here, I want you to turn to where the leading foot is. So now we are on the left side. So I just want you to turn through the T-spine as much as you can. Now we are, now we are since we are locking down the hips, right? The hip rotator is not going to work. So we're just going to isolate the T-spine coming from here. Yeah, Good. Then from here, you're just going to do 10 counts each leg. Then go on to the other one. Down low, drop it. There you go. So make sure that the knees track over the toes. Yeah, as far as you can. So each repetition, you try to go at a further range than the previous one. There you go. Good job. Let's move on.